and get out your foldable for Bible today that looks like this. Okay, it's just a quote that is printed out. Go ahead and get that out. And you should have chosen one of your composition notebooks that's going to be your Bible notebook. And this is going to go on the first page of your Bible notebook, all right? So I've got your table of contents that I'm working on putting together. We're gonna staple those and put them right inside the cover of your Bible notebook. So by the end of the day today, you should be able to take this from our lesson and you're going to remember every page of your notebook has to be colored. Now, that means you can do as much or as little as you want. When you have free time, you can take this and make it look creative like some of the ones that you've seen from previous years, or you can just do something simple and use uh, my definition of colored when you turn in your notebook is that every page has to have at least two colors on it. All right, so if you do that, you should be fine. This is going to go on page one of your table of contents and then glued on page one of your interactive notebook. All right, once we're done talking about this. So this year in Bible, I love Bible. It's my favorite thing to teach. I love that this year in fifth grade, we are going to go through the Old Testament and all of the amazing um, people in history that are in the Old Testament and we're going to be reading their stories. It's like looking back in history and being able to look at somebody's life, hundreds of years of their life, kind of shrunk down to a few pages and we get to learn from all the amazing things they did, from all the things they did right and we get to learn from all of their mistakes and we get to learn about God's story of love throughout the Old Testament. So it's gonna be a great year um, we are going to, our main theme throughout the whole year as we look at all these people's lives and how God works in all their lives has to do with this quote, all right? Because in each of these person's lives and in our life, everything in our life is a choice, right? So for instance, we learned the very first day of Bible. God is good and all the time. God is good. That doesn't change, right? God is always, always good and God has a plan for us and a story for our life. Now, can we control all the circumstances that happen in our life? No. Not really, right? Good things happen, bad things happen. And we'll see that in all the stories that we're gonna look at in the Old Testament. Some things are very not fair that happen to some of the people in, in the Old Testament. But what we do know is that everything that happened to them, they had a choice and we have a choice. Every time something happens, you have a choice what kind of seed you're going to plant in your life, all right? So something bad happens in my life. I can choose to plant seeds in my heart of trusting God or I can plant seeds of fear. I can choose to plant seeds of unforgiveness and anger, or I can choose to plant seeds of forgiveness and grace. So much of your life and my life and the people's lives that we're gonna look at in the Old Testament has to do, had to do, with what choice they made between two things. And it really determined where the path of their life went. Did they trust God or did they fear? And which one did they act upon? You have a question? You're right, we will change that. We'll probably keep that this week, but next week we'll come up with something else. And usually it has to do with what our Bible lesson is. That's a good question. Okay, so let's read this quote together. It says, Sow a thought. What does the word sow mean? Do you know what that word means when it comes to gardening and planting? What does it mean to sow something? Not sow as in needle and thread sow. Anybody know? The word S-O-W? Okay, to sow something means to plant it, okay? So if you sow a seed, it means you plant the seed in the ground. Like a farmer would sow seeds into his field. Does that make sense? So listen to this, it says, if you sow a thought, what, is it, what do you think that means? If you sow a thought, then you're going to reap an action. 
It's the, it's the concept in the Bible of sowing and reaping. Yes, Peyton? I'm sorry, Julie, Juliet. Okay, so Juliet, you can go ahead and come up and get that. Um, if you ever come in late, guys, you're gonna just want to look at the board and see what you missed as far as getting things for um, getting things for what you need for the day, okay? There you go, that's why that's what you missed. Um, anybody know, sowing and reaping. Okay, let's look and see. Let me do this really quick. I want you Hold one second. Okay. So I just looked this up really quick because I want you to see that this is not just a quote. This isn't just like somebody thinking this is a good life concept. This is actually a biblical concept. So look at the board and we looked at Galatians 6 and it says this, a man reaps what he sows. What, do you th what does that mean? If you know that to sow something is to plant something, and to reap something is when you harvest it, right? So if I sow a, if I sow a seed, if I sow a, a seed of a flower, right? So say I want some flowers for my sow seeds. I sow petunia seeds. What do you think I'm going to reap? What's going to grow? Yes. You're gonna harvest the flowers? Yes. What if I sow corn seeds? What is going to grow? Jackson. What if I sow some tomato seeds? What's going to, what am I going to reap? Yes. I'm going to reap tomato seeds. Do you think I could ever sow tomato seeds and grow a petunia? No. Could I ever sow a corn seed and get a tomato plant to grow? No. That doesn't work that way right? You reap what you sow. So when it says a man reaps what he sows, the one who sows or plants to please his sinful nature from that nature is going to reap what? Can you see behind me? The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. destruction. If you sow sin, you reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, to please the Lord, from that Spirit will reap what? Eternal life. Eternal life. Okay, so it says you reap what you sow. That makes sense, right? You get what you plant. So in our lives, we also get or we reap in our lives what we plant. Okay, so let's look at this. It says if you sow a thought... That means you plant it, you water it, you tend it, you give it sunlight. If you sow that thought, what do you think you get from that? What does it say? You reap what? Action. You reap an action. Okay, so let's think about that. What does that mean? If I sow a thought of hate, like, oh, um, I don't want to use any of you because I don't <laughs> want to direct it towards you. Say I have person over here and I, they hurt my feelings and I just think, oh, I just hate them. They're so mean. And so every time I look at them, I just think, oh, they're so mean. I hate them. So I take that thought and I plant it and I water it, right? I keep thinking about it. Whenever they do something, I think, oh, and that's why I don't like them. So I'm like watering that thought over and over and over. What's going to grow from that thought? What do you think? Yes. A bad action. You can't keep thinking something and thinking something and thinking and thinking and thinking it. Eventually, if you sow a thought, it reaps an action. And we will see that as we read some of the stories of the Old Testament. When you sow a thought over and over again, it comes out in an action the bad things, but now let's take it as a good way. What if that person hurt my feelings and I think, you know what? I'm really angry about that. But I also know that sometimes people who are hurting hurt other people. So I'm just going to choose grace. 
I'm going to choose to love that person even though they hurt my feelings. So I'm gonna look at that person every day and I think I choose to plant love for that person. I choose to plant grace and forgiveness. I don't know what's going on in their life, so I'm just gonna give them grace. And I keep thinking that every day I look at them, I think, Lord, just help whatever's going on in their life. If I keep planting that, what do you think I reap? What kind of action? Yes. A good action, right? They knock their pencil box off their desk, which happens a lot in this room, and everything goes everywhere. And that you think, oh my goodness, I love that person. I know something might be going on and that's why they're being ugly to me. So, but out of those loving thoughts comes a loving action. You reap what you sow. Does that make sense? It's gonna be very, we're gonna keep coming back to this with every lesson we learn because I want this to become something in your life where you realize what I sow, I'm going to reap. So let's keep reading. If I sow a thought over and over, I take care of it, take care of it, good or bad, I reap the action that comes from those thoughts. Now, what if I sow that action? What if the person who sowed the hateful thoughts did the unkind action? What if you keep sowing that action? You do that action over and over again. You do that unkind action over and over and over and over again. What do you reap from keep from continually sowing an unkind action? So an action, reap a habit. habit. Now it went from a thought to an action, and now it's a habit, good or bad. So the, the person who sowed hatred got a hateful action, and they kept doing it and doing it, and now it's just a habit. Now you're just hateful to that person as a habit. Or it's become a habit that you're lo you, you are loving in your actions. Does that make sense? If you sow it, you reap it. Now let's take it a step further. What if you've developed a hateful habit or you've developed a loving habit and you keep that habit going over weeks, over months, over years? If you sow a habit in your life, what do you reap, Kurt? A character. You reap a character. What is character? Anybody um, know what your character is? Yeah. Um, it's something that, like, it's your character, like, whatever. Yes, okay, that's good. Your character, it's who you are, right? It's not just maybe an action that you've done or a habit that you've created. It becomes who you are. It's what you're known for. Oh, that person has a, has a very loyal character. That person has a very loving character. That person has a very ill-spirited character. It's kind of your identity. It's who you have become. So, you don't just become a person of ill character or good character overnight. How do you do it? Let's back it up. You back it up to a thought that you plant and you take care of, which becomes a habit, which becomes an action, which becomes a habit, which becomes your character, right? It's who you are. And what if over a long period of time, years and years, it's your character, you sow that character, what do you reap, Romy? A destiny. Your destiny, what your life is about, your story. Who has written your destiny out? God. God has. God has also given you a free will to your own thoughts, to your own actions, to your own habits, to your own character. God has given you the ability to verge off of his story for you and to make your own choices. This is something that I want you to think about. Why? Because even though you are in fifth grade, you think that this is a part of your life, you are choosing your character and your destiny every day. How do you think this applies to your fifth grade life right now? We're gonna apply this almost every day to our Bible lesson, to the characters and the, the people in the Bible that this is, we're gonna learn from that, how they reap what they sow. How does it make a difference in your life in fifth grade right now? How do you think like, okay, today, how do you think this could play out? Give me a scenario. Anybody have an idea that can walk me through that? Juliet. Um, if someone like told something, like what they did, and then they You don't realize that every day you're planting seeds. 
but you are. And we'll talk about that a lot. Sometimes I'll say to you, what kind of seed are you planting with that choice? Because you might just think, well, I'm just acting this way, but you're not. All your actions become habits and character. So when you do an action, you have to think, oh, maybe my thoughts aren't the right thoughts about this. Maybe my actions, do I want to plant that seed? Because guess what? When you plant a seed, something grows. If you want to be a kind, encouraging person, you have to plant seeds, make a choice to plant encouraging seeds. So let's say this happens. Your friend comes to you and says, okay, I'm gonna use somebody. Who's okay if I use you for an, a, a, like an example, even if it's bad? Okay, Jackson, can I use you for an example? Shepard, I'm gonna use you for an example. Okay, I need another boy. Kurt, okay, I'm gonna use you three boys, okay? So Kurt comes to Shepard and says, Shepard, did you see what Jackson just did? I think that was just so dumb. And Shepard listens to Kurt, okay? And all these people have choices, right? So Kurt's choosing, Kurt, I'm gonna make you the bad guy, okay? I know you can handle it, because I, I know you're a good kid. Are you always the bad guy? Okay, so Kurt's plant, Kurt, Kurt planted a seed. He planted a seed of gossip, right? And unkindness, okay? Shepherd says, well, Kurt, you know, I don't think that was dumb. I think, I think that was really a creative thing of, of Jackson to do, okay? Shepherd chooses to plant a seed of kindness. kindness and encouragement, right? He's got his friends back. Two different people, same situation. One plant is, plants a seed of gossip, and unkindness, and one plants a seed of kindness and encouragement, okay? So as that progresses, eventually, <coughs> Kurt, who would not be this way, because I know Kurt, so that's why I can pick on him, those seeds of gossip that he chose to plant are going to grow. They're gonna produce an action and a character. Then people know, you know what, Kurt is the kind of person that he talks about people behind their back, and it's just, I feel really negative when I'm around him. He, that is his character. And Shepherd, if you're if you make those kind of choices, you plant seeds of encouragement and you stand up against those who might be talking ill, he is going to be planting seeds and developing a character that people are like, you know what? I can go to Shepherd and I can talk to him because I know he's always got my back. He's always encouraging and building people up. And I don't have to worry about what he's saying behind my back. And eventually, years later, that is the type of character and destiny you have created for yourself. However, do you think of that always when you make a choice to say something or to do something? Do you always, I don't think of that all the time. I think, oh, it's just a little comment that I made. Oh, it's just a little white lie that I did. Do you think, you know what? If you, if you think deceitful thoughts, if you do deceitful actions, if you just do a little thing that is not exactly the truth and don't tell the whole truth, do you know that you're developing a character of dishonesty? We're gonna read, we're gonna read and learn about somebody in the Bible who sowed seeds of dishonesty and reaped the destruction of his character, okay? So, but we're not just gonna read about people in the Bible. We're gonna make it apply to our lives. And what's really cool is sometimes people will be very transparent in Bible class, and I hope that you are. Sometimes people will say, you know what? Because I'll say, how does this apply to your life? Always, almost every lesson, how does this apply to you? Sometimes someone will raise their hand and say, you know what? I just have to admit that I thought these thoughts and I did these actions, and I'm not proud of them, but this could lead to a bad, you know, to a bad road, and I need to adjust that. And then we'll have other people say, you know what, me too. Oh, you know what, me too, I've done that before. So we can all learn together and grow together, but this is kind of going to be our, our foundation that we keep going back to. What are you sowing and what are you reaping in your life? Okay, yes, throw me. That is a fabulous, fabulous question. Did y'all hear that? Romy asked, what if you realize you're sowing a bad habit? Is there a way not to water it, not to keep attending to it? That's a very mature question to ask. It's a question a lot of us as adults should be asking ourselves. Because a lot of time, you don't realize you're sowing that thought until it's an action. And you're like, whoa, 
I kind of can't believe what I just did. Or a lot of times you don't realize your actions until they become a habit. And maybe someone points them out to you and you're like, oh my goodness. Is that the end of it? No, because God is very gracious. And we are able to, if you're teachable, look at yourself and not tend to that. So here's something that's really interesting. I heard someone, I heard someone say this one time. That you can't really control what, what Satan tempts you with. So Satan's always going to tempt you in your mind to think bad thoughts, to plant those thoughts, right? He wants to, he wants you to go down that path. So you can't really stop Satan from, th from the thoughts that enter your mind. Like, oh, that person's really whatever, whatever. Or Satan tempts you. It's okay. You can, you can be dishonest about that. You're not really telling a lie. You're just not telling the full truth. So it's okay. Satan will always try to tempt you in that way. So what do you do with that temptation? This is what someone said once. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, can you? can't stop that. You can't stop a thought from coming into your brain, but you can stop a bird from building a nest in your hair. Let's think about that. You can't stop a bird from flying across your head, but you can stop him from building a whole nest in your hair. How would you do that? How would you stop a bird from building a nest in your hair? Right? Okay, get out of here, right? You would fling it away. I thought that's a really good way to describe it. When a thought comes into your mind of being dishonest or being sinful, you just like, you get rid of it. Nope, you, you fling it away, okay? So that is how you can stop a thought. Once something becomes an action or a habit, how do you not tend to it? How do you not water it? What does it mean if you water it? Let's start there. How do you water a habit? How do you keep it going? Romy? You keep on doing it. You don't listen to people who might be saying, um, Romy, I see this habit in your life of being less than totally honest. I think you should really like work on that. And you say, I'm fine. I, you know, you deny it or you say you, you justify it. Or you say, you know what, I'm gonna really gonna actively work on undoing that habit. So I'm gonna make myself, say you had a habit of being a gossiper. You just talk a lot about people negatively. What you would do is you would say, you know what? I wanna undo that habit. So I have to go the opposite way. What is the opposite of gossiping negatively about someone? Yeah. <laughs> right, so you say every day, if that would be your habit that you want to undo, you would say every day, I'm going to choose to talk good about two people every day, talk good about them. I'm gonna encourage them, I'm gonna think good thoughts, I'm gonna do good things, I'm gonna go out of my way to do the opposite of what my habit is. So I break my habit, so I don't water it. If you starve something, what happens? What happens if you starve a person? They die. They die. What happens if you starve a plant? You don't water it. It dies. If you starve a habit, meaning you don't do it, you go the opposite, right? What would happen? It will eventually die. So that's a very good question, Romy. Starve your habit and it will die, okay? So we're going to focus on this throughout our thing, we're gonna kind of have a good visual, exactly like um, Romy said, how do, you, how do you starve a plant? How do you not water it? All right, and we're gonna get right into the Bible. We're gonna start at the very beginning in Genesis and go all the way through as far as we can get through the rest of the year. All right, so this right here, I want you to, when I, when I tell you to, I want you to put this in your Bible folder. We're gonna take some time, hopefully today and tomorrow, we're just gonna to have to get our table of contents all glued in and everything so that we can start gluing these into our composition notebooks. If you, actually, let's do this. How many of you have your composition notebook out in front of you? E okay, even though there's no table of contents, I want you to take this, can I borrow yours, Zachary? And I want you to, all right, let me just show you really quick what we're gonna